Hi everybody, it's Sally from Sally Stampers. Thank you for joining me today. I hope you're all safe and keeping well. Um, and hopefully my projects are giving you something to attempt and try uh, whilst we're all shut inside. Um, at least the sun's not shining too much today, so it kind of makes you feel a bit better for being inside. But um, at least we can do crafting, which is the one thing that brings us all together, isn't it? And that's the best thing. Um, so today I'm bringing you my fold flat double faceted box. Um, I did see this on another lady's channel and I thought it was lovely and I thought it would be perfect for filling with Easter treats. Um, it opens up nicely. You could fill that with lots and lots of goodies. It's obviously a good size that way in length and then it closes up nicely and I just think that's quite a pretty pretty box and of course I'm using this beautiful ornate garden suite which I can't even begin to tell you how much I love so enough waffling let's make it and I'm going to apologize because I did actually prepare these projects a, a little while ago so <laughs> trying to follow my own instructions will actually be quite interesting I think but we'll get there okay so you need a sheet of cardstock that unfortunately is going to be one of your 12 by 12 sheets and you need it to be 12 by 10 and a half which is 30 by 27 centimeters and we're going to go and score the long side at one inch one and a quarter inches and three which will be 2.5 three and 7.5 centimeters we're then going to rotate completely so those score lines are now over to your right and we're going to repeat. So again we're going to score at one, one and a quarter and three. And again that's 2.53 and 7.5. On the short side we're going to score at one and a half, five, six and a half, and 10 and in centimeters that will be 4 12.5 16.5 and 25 centimeters okay so what we're going to do here is we're going to fold that second score line okay so we're just going to fold that over and then we're going to make a little notch at three quarters of an inch and five and three quarters of an inch. So when you open it up, you have a mark there and there. Then we're gonna flip the card over so you now have the wrong side of your score lines and we're gonna repeat. And the reason we're doing it this way is because obviously it's easier to measure it this way because we have this extra bit here and it all becomes a bit technical. So we're going to notch again at three quarters and five and three quarters and in centimetres that will be two and 14.5. Okay so let's move my scoring board out of the way and then we're simply going to fold and burnish these score lines. I'm also going to apologise for the state of my nails. I have literally not very many left and they are a mess, but unfortunately, like many, I can't get to see my beautician. So unfortunately, my nails aren't so good. Um, I also need a haircut. <laughs> but you know, priorities, there's worse things going on right now than me needing a haircut or my nails doing. So we'll just have to get on with it, won't we? So, once you've done all of your folding and burnishing, and we're then going to grab a ruler and where, let's turn it back around the correct way, where you made your little notches, you're going to score from the notch to the corner. So we're making that triangle shape in there and it's in that little square okay and I'm going to spin round and do the same 
with this one. Nearly lost where I was with it then. Okay, so you can already see how this beautiful box is taking shape. It's working quite well. Now I have to remember which bits we need to cut now. Let me just get my original and then I can remember. Okay, so we need to figure out which bit will be our top and this applies to many boxes that you'll make in this um, way. So you need to have your join which will be here at the bottom. So this is going to be the front stroke decorative part of your box. Okay. So what I want to do here is cut away all of this section because we're not going to be needing that. I'm just going to grab my scissors and we're cutting across that second line as well so to the tip of that triangle that you've made so we're going to cut all the way along the next one and all the way across the top of that triangle as well and we're going to cut that piece away and equally this long bit here we're just going to cut that piece away too. Okay so you're literally left with just that part and then I'm going to do exactly the same for the bottom. So we're going to cut away the small squares at the side and then again all the way across that second score line all the way across the tops of the triangles right up to that last large piece. Okay, so you should now have this shape. Let me turn it sideways that way. So you've got all of that panel there, your triangles and your thinner section, your big one, your triangles and your thinner section. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is use my detailed corner rounder. <laughs> detailed trio punch and I'm just gonna round the corners of this piece and again this one so I'm doing both ends and as you can see I'm just tucking the rest of the card under to keep it out of the way that bit done. So we now have rounded corners. Then I want to add my DSP. So I have two large pieces that are five and three quarters by three and a quarter, which is eight by 14.5 centimeters. And these are obviously going to go on the large panels. Then you'll need two pieces that are five and three quarters by one and a quarter, and they will be 3.5 by 14.5. And they will go on this piece. And I've just matched that DSP up, and I actually had no intention of that. How amazing is that? I bet this piece doesn't do the same. No. Oh, nearly. Nearly, maybe. <laughs> and this one will go, whoops, on here, which I just can't get to sit straight. There we go. And then I need four pieces that are three and a quarter by one and a half, which is eight by four centimetres. And these are going on these panels up here. Oops, get that 
this off there or it'll all be sticking. And then my last two pieces, whoops, on the bottom parts here. Oh dear, that's not straight, I don't think at all. Never mind. Okay. Then I'm going to grab my old favourite, my old loyal tear and tape, which is going to go all the way along this piece. And then I'm actually going to put my decoration on before I do any more. The last thing I do want to do though is the top, which actually is the top, because again we're going to fold that round. So this is going to be the top. My half inch circle punch, I just want to take a little finger notch out of the top just there. So I now want to put my decoration on here. So I have already cut these out ready because it would have taken ages, but I've used these beautiful ornate layers. They're just stunning, aren't they? And I've used this one, again, because it was an oblong, which I thought went well with my box. So in contrast to my other box, which I will grab in just a second, I like to put my things away properly. Um, so on this one, I'll just pop my lid back in again. So I've used mint macaron for the die cut and then um, terracotta tile for my stamp. Oh my goodness, I've just put that on my sprayed stamp and scrub. And look what's happened, can you see, look. <laughs> it's gone all funny. Oh well, that'll teach me. Um, so I've gone contraire with this one, so I'm going to use terracotta tile for my um, die cut layer, which I used dimensionals to a dear, and I've actually used the edges to die to to uh, a dear this. Um, it just seemed perfect because I had all of this excess left over. So I'm just going to stick that on there. So waste not, want not. So I'm just going to take the backing off these. So that's those bits done and then this is going to sit just on the centre just there and then I have my whisper white that I just sort of measured um, the die cut and decided how big I wanted that to be so obviously if you're using a different shape die cut and then I actually used my corner rounder and I just took Oops. I just took the opposites, opposite corners away. That's really not done very well at all. I don't know, quite know what's going on with me this morning. That's better. That one's not very smart, is it? Let's just give it a tiny little trim. There we go. And then I have my mint macaron and my ornate thanks. And I went with the large thank you, which is just here. And I'm using my H block for this because it fits just perfect. And then I really need to re-ink some of my pads. And then this simply is just stamped 
onto that Mr. White. Just give that a quick clean. And then dimensionals on the back of this one. And then this is obviously going on my die cut and you can already see that this is such a lovely lovely little box for any gift really and then the last bit is these gorgeous gilded gems which you can see I've already used an absolute ton of because I love them so I'm going to use a couple of the large ones just down here and then a medium one just there and a small one just there and then the last little bits let's take the backing off this tear and tape fold the box over And then it is just simply a case of pushing those triangular bits that we've done. And this will be the bottom. Now you may just need to give this a little tiny curl, if you like, just to encourage it to slide in there. You may also need to trim it slightly if, like me, you don't quite cut down that score line properly. There we go. That's better. And like I said, you just need to give it a gentle bit of encouragement. There we go. So that's the bottom lovely and tightly tucked in. And then the top I can already see I'm going to have the same problem here. What I'm referring to is this bit, where my score is. Can you see? You can see just a little extra there, and that's literally all I'm taking off, is this, the crease from the score. That's it. Just a tiny, tiny little piece Let's do that side too, just give it a nice neat finish. And then this again, just pushing those triangles in. And then we just tuck the lid in. Obviously putting your goodies in first. You sort of have to encourage it because it obviously wants to go the wrong way. There we go. And there we have it. And I've done mine. Oh no, I haven't. Back to front. Completely back to front, but it doesn't matter. So this one opens that way. This one opens that way. <laughs> but they're the same thing, aren't they? How pretty are they? Hope you like them. Don't forget to come back and see what other projects I have next week. See you again soon. Bye. <laughs>